in Liberia, November 1944. A public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that puppy, the happy start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. Oh, I saw in him somebody dependable, somebody who I knew I could work with, somebody who had long ago, uh, I had an association, a friendship, and I've been proving correct. People things, uh, people things, whether in government, wherever I work, that I learned to separate what is for me and what is for people. Joseph Barker Revealed, coming soon on your screens. story begins here in the remote village of Wasunga in Foya District, Lofa County, Northern Liberia. Foya is the biggest district in this county and now uh, it is close to the border uh, by, I mean by the Republic of Sierra Leone and uh, it is dominated by the Kisi ethnic group and it is mainly um, an economic area, you know, is is in terms of uh, the economy or the economic aspect uh, based on its uh, proximity. Uh, they do a lot of, of trade, most especially when it comes to the, the border. It was here on the 30th of November in 1944 that one of Liberia's public spirited patriots was born. Joseph Numa Boakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County, uh, the fifth son of my mother. That's how I got the Numa name. And I'm from this very community in Foya. Later Newman lived in poverty and struggled through education, but he was stood the test of time working with other kids on the farm to support the family, a routine he created to focus on his future. Traditional village life at a certain age, you got up in the morning and people are going on a farm and you probably would take the chicken basket with the chicken in there and normally it's cold and the grass is wet so they usually have something to shake the water up and you go to the farm <clears throat> and your job there is to do errands when you go to the farm, when people turn their head to uh, scratch the farm, he turns his face down so. <laughs> the people look at him and say, oh, that's not the way, turn your face so. They turn his face. Or well, you can't make it up. I do remember that one of the times, having gone to school, uh, you drive birds from the farm and usually there's a way they call people who drive birds from the farm in Kisi Chuanjiwa that means people who drive birds but it sounds like the children of the birds and as you see uh, I was not accustomed to that so when I was called that name I complained to my ma mother that they were calling me the child of a bird and she had to explain to me that 
it's normally how they refer to people who drive bird. It doesn't mean you are a child of a bird. Epitomizing the Liberian adage that it does not matter where one comes from, but where he's headed, today Joseph Newman Borkai is a radiant hope for his hometown and a model citizen. Everywhere he goes, the poor, the grassroots, the farmers, and all who have been touched by his works await him patiently. I remember at the time we used to walk from here to Foya, we used to look for a road in the bush, a path, path road to go to Foya. But during the time he worked for LPMC, he was able to help making this road, the motor car road, the road that car can move on. Because I told you, I said we used to walk in the bush to go to Foya. And but then, uh, as he took that first, uh, position, I mean, he did something that we all knew that if he was given the chance in the future, he could do more than that. So actually, we kept praying for him that he would be somebody, uh, somebody, uh, fruitful to help us. Honorable Boykai has served his country as Managing Director of the Liberia Produce Marketing Corporation, Managing Director of the Liberia Petroleum Refinery Company, LPRC, in 1992, and as Minister of Agriculture from 1983 to 1985. His legacies are there for all to see. Well, for example, in this community, the people predominantly grow rice. So the oil palm became a, a source of earning cash. And when we were planting these oil palms, there was a little bit of opposition because if people here felt they didn't have much land. But nowadays they are grateful that they have the oil palm. Not only that they have it, they want more of it because he has become a very important source of income. For these and many other Liberian women, agriculture has supported many families. In fact, it is the backbone to Liberia's economy. Both men and women play significant roles on various fields. <laughs> She joined this organization mainly because she has children, they have to go to school, she has to feed the children. And also um, she has a lot of activities to do at home. This is why she deemed it necessary to be part of this group to produce rice and she will be able from the production here, any share she receives from here, she will be able to support the family because she doesn't have a husband. Most of them that are here, as she said, they, are, they don't have husband. It is from here they base and get money to sponsor their children to go to school and do other home activities. So I keep me to all you know, can Well, I've known him. I was a young man in, in college in, in the 80s, in the 1980s, when I was at a university. And then when I graduated, I worked and I knew him very well. Uh, he was a minister of agriculture, very, very strategic and focused. And uh, I've been fortunate over the last four or five years since I came back to work with him at, at various levels. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. Uh, I worked in the ministry as an advisor and I always consulted him in terms of how we move things forward and uh, he's somebody who you can trust he has a passion for agriculture that is very important 
Ameya kundi kwa ya kani mo hero masali njoo 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 ni. She said she saw a great change in or his excellency Ambassador Joseph Mabwaga becomes vice president for this republic. There are changes. Even he came from here. There are a lot of changes that have been made since he became the vice president for this republic. The qualities that she saw in or his excellency Ambassador Joseph Mabwaga for becoming a president for this republic. One in the history she saw that people told them and they saw a. In the clear picture that even the palm oil that we are seeing, those things were brought on the side by His Excellency Joseph Nyabwake at the time when he was in the Ministry of Agriculture. More besides, even the palm mill that was built to chase any, all of these things were brought by Joseph Nyabwake. And that if he becomes the president for this republic, he will even do more than what he did when he was not there. One time he met us, we were cutting the rice here because that time. It's very hard for us to get a sickle nerve to cut the rice. So he met us suffering. That, yes, he gave us great support. When he get there, he will be there. For we are the poorest people. We don't have nobody to help. Let me and sitting down. No fathers, no mothers, nothing. Nobody is helping me. But through that papay, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. What you need to know is that even before he became Minister of Agriculture, he, he was the first librarian to set up to work and stabilize the Library Produce Marketing Corporation, LPMC, which was a commodity uh, agency looking after tree crops and other, other uh, export crops. And he managed that very well. In fact, LPMC at the time was a, was a, was a force ensuring the stability of the Agricultural Cooperative Development Bank because they were able to aggregate uh, cocoa, coffee and related produce to be able to sell and create more jobs and, and uh, generate revenues for the country. To tell you the final truth, the Pape is well qualified to go as a president because within four years here, there is a palm tree and most of our road we used to make some creek, we used to make the lot. But when we look at in the setting this time around, the, the bridges have been built. This one that right here, that Joseph Walker have made it by all possible back, we get a bridge. And most of the palm uh, tree you see here, that Joseph Walker bring that project, he helped us a lot. And from that uh, palm tree, most of our brothers, most of our sisters going to school. Of those, by that time he bring this uh, project, we were not alive that time. We were not born that time. But our fathers, they are benefit that they leave this uh, uh, palm tree for us. There were sometimes we can cut the palm tree, we sell it, we support our children to go to school. So it's not something that he's going to be trying to do because he's president. He already has that passion for it. And we believe in the same thing. And he's, he's been my, my advisor. And we agree that if we don't get agriculture right, no, whoever becomes president will find it difficult to run this country. So he has that to his advantage. And we'll provide all the support he needs to be able to ensure that what has been built, the foundation that uh, President Ellen Johnson Sennett has set up, will be able to, to move very fast because he's already part of the, the team and he understands the issues around the agriculture. So along with the rice farming, it's an oil palm and <clears throat> because not only Liberia but I believe in Africa in general that we are not going to be manufacturers of ships or airplanes but we can feed the world we can feed ourselves because we have the soil, we have the climate, and the weather condition is favorable. So I do believe that agriculture is that uh, way for Liberia and African countries to be able to build their economy.
through it all, it was that singular choice of Ellen Johnson's sleeve to have Joseph Boykai as a vice president that brought the best out of him. He had worked with my husband, you know, uh, in the Ministry of Agriculture. And so he became, in a way, a family friend. Uh, while I was out of the country, I established a, a small foundation for Miss Wagon, intended to help villagers. And he worked on that too while I was away. He was able to go and work with some of the farmers who were trying to help. And so I saw in him somebody dependable, somebody who I knew I could work with, somebody who had long ago uh, I've had an association, a friendship with, and I felt that's the person I could, I could rely on to work with me on my agenda, and, and, and I've been proving correct. The pair has managed to restore confidence in Liberia's agriculture sector. The president herself is personally involved in making agriculture a priority while organizing the young people of Liberia to venture into the field leading the way by establishing a farm in Westing Liberia, Bumming County that serves as an encouragement for her compatriots. the result of my work and effort beginning to come to fruition as the best Christmas I can have. That's the joy that I get because uh, they prove that my example is now being repeated is now being internalized and intensified through their effort. So all that they brought represented what they had grown and they wanted to show me that indeed, you know, they are, they are now strong, small farmers. Uh, they are producing not only for their own needs, but producing for market. And so I think that's, that, that to me, my purpose has been fulfilled in that regard. Vice President Joseph Newman Boyka has continued to work along with President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf to restore law and order in a country wrecked by years of a civil strife. Liberia today showcases a new hydropower plant at Mount Coffee with enhanced capacity commissioned in 2016 to provide the much needed power for economic growth. The Mount Coffee was already damaged. All of the substations were damaged. So basically, we had completely uh, ground zero at LEC. The only thing to do was to plan to move up. And then most of the transmission lines were down. The wires were cut. Um, the ones that in the substations, bullet holes, things were shot up. 
and of course Mount Coffee was completely so it, it was a total devastation there was total devastation of the electricity infrastructure and that's how difficult it was and so electricity was unheard of running water was unheard of the streets uh, we used to call them uh, when you drive, you were massaged because uh, <laughs> everything was down, completely down. So it is regrettable that it happened. I'm sure everyone felt the absence of the power, use of generators, a lot of life being lost in the operation of generator because carbon monoxide gas, uh, community power wires are strong all around the community. People not aware of those uh, uh, cables. It get in contact with them, it causes life, and you know. So I hope that uh, with the creation of the Mount Coffee Hydro Power Plant, all of those things that uh, were not done in a proper manner could be put in place. Uh, that the power plant would be able to supply the power uh, to the various community, and they will use it adequately. How the power is generated? We are on the banks of the St. Paul River. And on the banks of the St. Paul River, we have uh, 10 radar gates. Uh, by closing those gates, we direct, redirect the flow of the water to our reservoir. Uh, at our reservoir, we have another set of gates that controls the water, build up the volume that we need to generate the power. And when all is said and we begin operation, those gates are open, the water flows into the, uh, into the uh, spiral tube to the bottom of the turbine and then from there electricity is produced through that process. It is generated from the turbine to the substation. At the substation we transmit 66 kilovolts from Mount Coffee into Bushroy and into Painesville. What we do, we have two circuits going to Painesville and two circuits going into Bushroy. When we generate the power, we send it down to the Library Electricity Corporation grid and then from there it is distributed towards the various community. So our primary operation here is to generate that power and, and evacuate that power from here to Bushroy and Pinsville. And then from there it's taken to the LDC grid. I think it's going to have, uh, 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 they're going to have a lot of benefit. As you can tell, this yard is very quiet now, which means that there are no heavy fuel oil plants running. Mount Coffee is right now the plant that is taking most of the load. Even though it is in the test phase, so now we're testing Mount Coffee up to 100%. What that means is that if we don't have to buy fuel for these generators to run, eventually the water will get low in Mount Coffee. But if we don't have to buy fuel, the cost of electricity will be much cheaper. All of these enterprises will be able to afford the electricity and uh, and to be able to run efficiently and affordably. And in that respect, they are right, because that is the one that affects their lives directly. And I can see that. But to produce that power costs $360 million. We would not have been able to do it if we were not able to go out and have the means to be able to, to get the support for doing so. But they're right. Um, like I say, that has a direct impact on their lives and, and, and that will provide the basis for, for being able to, to get the economy to grow. Well, I must give her the credit. Um, it is through her hard work, through her inspiration, through her ability to convince uh, the funders we, we have here now who funded this project to actually buy into the process. So politically, I think she scored a significant point by producing the power that she promised in her electoral process. So uh, it's a good project. Uh, it worth its, its cost. And, and I hope that the librarian people will use it accordingly. And um, it, should, it should be a project that uh, will benefit the people, not just the residential aspect of the communities, but into the industrial aspect. People, people will now start to open up small businesses. People can go into farming and, and create some sort of economic engine that will benefit themselves through her hard work. 
Vice President Joseph N. Boca, I, I think I've known him for a good number of years. Uh, he Originally, I met him uh, when he operated a business uh, making wooden products, doors. And when I needed some doors, of course, he supplied them to me. Very insightful person. He listens very carefully. He takes in and he makes wise decisions. Uh, he appears to be quiet, but I think that quietude is not a measure of, of, uh, of his dynamism. It's a measure of his attentiveness to detail and being able to absorb the information that you're going to take. When he finally spews out his responses, they relate to what you're talking about and they are very effective. Vice President Joseph Boykai continues to encourage investors to take advantage of the investment climate in Liberia and ensures that basic social services are provided to the people of Liberia. Liberian workers can now also speak of a better future as they contribute to their retirement through NASCOR, the National Social Security and Welfare Corporation that is now well to position than it was several years ago. Like everything else, the entire country was devastated. And clearly that would have included the pension fund. The NASCAR um, is a pension fund. It was eroded. And you know when you're doing a pension fund, the most important part is the confidence that needs to be built within the populace and the employers that will pay. That was completely shattered. And so NASCAP had to, from the onset, try to rebuild confidence amongst employers and employees so as to, re to start the process of payments and understanding the purpose of your pension. When we started, we had a backlog of pensions to pay. You had to pay that, meet your initial, your core obligations. And as the kitty started to grow, NASCAP could go into social responsibility. It became NASCAP's responsibility to start and augment the government's projects. And what we did was um, we started to, you know, as companies came in, because of the total destruction of the country, you, you know, they would need office space. They would need accommodation. There were, all those things did not exist. We were foresighted. We jumped into Buchanan for starters. We had to start doing things in Monrovia. <music> Opening places, our largest investment now is at the ELWA Junction. It was a multi-million dollar building and now it's, um, it hosts the LRA. But what it did, not only did we put that building there, it changed the entire scenery of the Painesville area. worked along with um, the Painesville City Corporation. We started funding several projects that would create a change and help start the rebuilding of the infrastructure in Liberia, as long as it was in the direction of the government. Liberia can also today boast of rapid infrastructural development first-class roads with modern architectural buildings. If one looks back at it as where we started, uh, the salaries, the capacity, the lack of institutions, the lack of laws, if they look back at that and look where we've come today, Again, I say we've made progress. We haven't reached where um, 
where I hoped we had reached, where we had planned to reach, but I'm satisfied with the progress we've made. In terms of available resources, prevailing conditions, we can say the country had moved at least around seven. I would like to see a consolidation of the gains that we have made in this administration. I would like um, the incoming administration uh, to be able to carry out the rest of the agenda that we've already formulated. Our Vision 2030 has already been, been formulated. So all of those are there. Yes, a new administration may have additional things they want to do. Uh, they may have to, they may want to change some of their priorities and re-emphasize certain areas. Uh, but I would like to see us stay on the course because it is the course that's been well planned on which great progress has been made and any, any attempt to interrupt that and to, to roll things back will only delay the time when Liberia can truly march toward being a middle income country, which is our target for 2030. I believe this country could do better if we have access to the other parts of the country. Road will be number one, road will be number two, road will be number three. We have to have access. Liberia could be much, much richer if we had, we had connected the southeast, the northwest, the center part of Liberia we wouldn't have the kind of difficulties that we have. And I know that is doable. And that already would be a way of reconciling the people, opening the country for development. And I have a pretty good idea of what the links are to make things work. Uh, so definitely the experience that I've had before and during this time, I think I'm prepared to be able to channel a course that can begin to build this country.
déjà la